Dietary plant-based lectins explained. Are they bad? Lectins are types of proteins that bind to carbohydrates. The word lectin is derived from the Latin term leger, which means to select, as they are sticky and glue-like. There are literally hundreds of different lectins found in the botanical world. Their biological function in plants is to repel pests. In the human diet, lectins are most prevalent in plant-based foods. While gluten is one of the most well-known lectins, it turns out there may be others we need to be wary of. There is great nutritional debate about whether these dietary lectins found in many commonplace staples are foods we should or should not be consuming. Some say they're not a problem, while others say they're toxic. We've done our own independent research on the matter and read Plant Paradox, the book largely influencing the trend towards a lectin-free diet. In this video, we'll provide our insight from alternative health, personal view, and scientific perspectives. First, let's discuss which foods are known to be high in lectins and how they are proposed to affect the big issue of intestinal permeability. Lectin Food List Certain raw plant foods and the livestock animals who eat them are very high in lectin content. This list includes legumes, beans, peas, lentils, soybeans, and peanuts. Legumes are known for their lectin called phytohemagglutinin, or PHA. Whole grains, brown rice, cereal grains including corn, as well as some pseudo-cereals. Gluten-free grains lower in lectins include millet, sorghum, teff, and fonio. Vegetables, fruits, nightshades, and squashes like tomatoes, potatoes, eggplant, peppers, and goji berries. Squashes and cucumbers too, especially their skin. GMO foods. Many genetically modified food sources contain new types of lectins unknown to our typical foods. They're used to enhance the resistance of agricultural crops to pests and fungi. Animal products. Livestock animals fed soy, corn, or lectin-rich foods can be full of them, which you can get indirectly via the intake of dairy, eggs, or meat. Lectins explained about intestinal permeability. First, let's get one thing straight. The body doesn't naturally digest lectins, they are too large to squeeze through the gut's mucosal layers. In a normally functioning digestive system, they simply move through unchanged. However, when disorders that influence intestinal permeability exist, lectins can make their way into the body and cause problems. In a healthy human, the cells or epithelial tissue lining and mucosal layer of the gut provide some permeability to allow smaller sized nutrients to be absorbed into the bloodstream, all the while maintaining a barrier for potentially toxic compounds. Some people with a weakened digestive capacity and or conditions like celiac disease, leaky gut, or IBS can have an abnormally increased intestinal permeability which essentially interferes with these protective functions. In such instances, lectins are proposed to induce a compound known as zonulin, which can pry open the tight junctions in the intestinal epithelium, allowing lectins to enter the blood. At this point, they are considered foreign invaders, which in turn activates immune system responses. Are dietary lectins the primary cause of digestive inflammation or autoimmune conditions? In our opinion, no but we feel those who adhere to unhealthy diet and lifestyle practices, often linked with a weak microbiome, are more susceptible to becoming lectin intolerant. So yes, it may be a good idea to keep them out of the diet if this is the case or at least follow a lectin-free protocol when healing from associated health issues. However, before you decide to stop eating things like lentils, beans, peas, and whole grain rice, there are ways to reduce the amount of food lectins considerably. Ways to reduce lectins, the good news. Most all dietary lectins are especially a concern when they're consumed in their raw state. Luckily, most staple grains, beans, and vegetables like potatoes are always cooked, boiled until tender, to make them not only edible, but far more palatable. This can dramatically decrease the lectins found in these commonplace foods. In addition, 
Bean and grain lectins can be reduced via soaking and straining, as well as sprouting and fermentation methods. Alternative Health and Lectin Anti-Nutrients In alternative health circles, lectins are often deemed as anti-nutrients that can cause or exacerbate chronic inflammation and certain autoimmune disorders. One of the first advocates of eating lectin-free foods was naturopathic physician Peter Diadamo, known for promoting the blood type diet. Today, the book called The Plant Paradox by Dr. Stephen Gundry is again introducing the concept of dietary lectin exclusion and its potential usefulness for things like leaky gut as well as obesity. Gundry, a medical doctor, heart surgeon, cardiologist, and immunologist, who has now shifted his practice to what he calls restorative medicine, has played a very influential role in making the public aware of his findings on dietary lectin consumption. After reading The Plant Paradox, we would say it is obvious that he is genuinely passionate about the subject as well as discussing certain commonly prescribed medications and food toxins he calls disruptors, which he believes adds to microbiome weakness. Dr. Gundry has presumably spent over 15 years using his lectin-free diet plan on thousands of his own patients, achieving positive health results. He makes reference to many specific success stories throughout the book. We would say it is definitely a worthy read for anyone suffering from acute to chronic digestive issues. Our Personal Perspective one big obvious truth to us is that foods high in lectins are also highly nutritious and full of many beneficial nutrients. For example, cooked beans and whole grains are packed full of fiber. You simply need to prepare them via proper cooking methods. We have been eating lectin-rich plant-based foods as a regular part of our diet for well over 30 years. From our own personal experience, we have had no digestive or autoimmune health issues to speak of. This tells us firsthand that foods high in lectins don't necessarily cause abnormal intestinal permeability and chronic inflammation. We believe that while some people might benefit from dietary exclusion, not all people need to. Keep in mind that we do prepare all legumes by soaking overnight, then thoroughly strain and pressure cook them on high heat settings. We usually soak most whole grains, but not always, and steam until completely cooked. What does science say about dietary lectins? The topic was first addressed in a 2019 review entitled Dietary Lectin Exclusion, The Next Big Food Trend? Offering some criticism towards alternative dietary practitioners that come to conclusions with no evidence base from scientifically acknowledged research. However, the review did go on to report that it has been identified that some lectins may influence gut flora as well as inflammatory and immune functions. One of the initial studies back in 1999, Do Dietary Lectins Cause Disease?, brought to attention that they can potentially be toxic and or inflammatory, be resistant to cooking and digestive enzymes, or in many commonplace foods. More current research does indicate that dietary lectins can activate inflammatory disorders. Likewise, other science suggests eliminating lectin food sources can decrease autoimmune symptoms in some, but not all, people. Precautions It is best to exclude dietary plant-based lectins from the diet if you have acute or serious digestive disorders. Always seek the nutritional advice of a health professional before consuming lectin-rich foods if you are pregnant, nursing, have a major health condition, or are taking any medications. Thanks for watching! For more in-depth info on the subject of lectins, be sure and follow the links in the description box below this video. Please support the channel by giving this video a thumbs up if you found it useful. And don't pass up on these additional health-enhancing videos.